the Christian religion. The Hebrew Pentateuch in a Hebrew lodge and the Quran in a Mohammedan one belong on the altar. And one of these and the square and the compass properly understood are the great lights by which a mason must walk and work. Which one? Obviously not the Bible because morals and dogma itself says it hates that Bible. Didn't it say that? We read the quotes and they changed it all. And the Hebrew Pentateuch, well, that is the Bible. So which one is left? Which one's left? By elimination, the Quran is left. Now, the Quran as such or rightly understood? Probably rightly understood. Why? Because the Quran directly demotes Jesus Christ. It's the book that directly demotes Jesus Christ. Whereas the others had to be modified to adjust to the insider to demote Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Now let's have a look at this. This gets fascinating. The deadly deception. James D. Shaw was a 33 degree Freemason. And uh, he was at an interesting ceremony where a very high preacher, very prominent preacher, his first name's Billy, by the way, was also there at his initiation ceremony. But that's another story. 33rd degree, Knights Commander of Court of Honor, past worshipful master, Blue Lodge, past master of all Scottish Rite bodies. That's what he was. He was a 33 degree Freemason. And he explained some of the rituals. The deadly deception, James D. Shaw, 33rd degree initiation ceremony, the oath is sealed by drinking wine out of a human skull. May this wine I now drink become a deadly poison to me as the hemlock juice drunk by Socrates, should I ever knowingly or willfully violate the same. We've done this before. I'm just bringing it to perspective. A member dressed as a skeleton places his arms around the candidate who then states, and may these cold arms forever encircle me, should I ever knowingly or willfully violate the same. So that's the 33 degree initiation ceremony. But there is another one. Each of us was presented along with a Scottish Rite ring, a copy of Albert Pike's book, Morals and Dogma. So you get that when you get to the 33rd degree. We were told that it was the source book for Freemasonry and its meaning. We were also told that it must never leave our possessions and that arrangements must be made so that upon our deaths it would be returned to the Scottish Rite. Fortunately, I didn't have to go through the process, but I have one. I have one. Very useful. Now what's this got to do with Islam? Now this is the highest degree of Freemasonry. What happens there? The deadly deception. The Scottish Rite includes 29 degrees beyond the Blue Lodge. Culminating in the 32nd, the York Rite has the equivalent of 29 degrees of the Scottish Rite in advancement along the path that culminates in the degree Knights Templar. So the York Rite culminates at Knights Templar and the other one is the 32nd degree in the Scottish Rite. Okay. In addition, the shrine. Ancient Arabic order, nobles of the mystic shrine, is available to 32nd degree masons and knights templar who wish to participate. So the highest order is available, those of the highest order can become shriners. Now the shriners on Arabic order and this is for Protestants. And this is where the plot thickens. Do you think there is a link between Shrine of Freemasonry and Islam, Christianity and Islam? Well, I think there just might be. We were talking about Shriner Freemasonry and how it links Islam to the secret societies. Let's continue our interesting little investigative study. The Shrine, the ancient Arabic order, nobles of the mystic Shrine, the Shrine is the show army of Masonry. Maintains a very high profile, it is necessary to be a 32nd degree Mason for six months before being eligible to join the shrine. Only the highest Freemasons may join the shrine. Now these are most of the prominent Americans. By the way, 
All the big prominent Americans march through New York as the Shriners in their masquerades. Now, the Shrine is in the name of Allah, did you know that? So here the Christians, of so-called Christians of the 32nd degree, who now know already that they worship Lucifer, come to the Shrine with a Quran on the altar. Now the Bible's gone. When you reach the highest level of Freemasonry and you become a Shriner, the Bible's gone. We sealed our solemn oath in the name of Allah, the God of the Arab, the Muslim, the Mohammedan, the God of our fathers. Wow, is Allah the God of our fathers? Here's the oath. In willful violation whereof I incur the fearful penalty of having my eyeballs pierced to the center with three-edged blade, my feet flayed, and I be forced to walk the hot sands upon the sterile shores of the Red Sea until the flaming sun shall strike me with a livid plague. And may Allah, the God of Arab, Muslim, and Mohammedan, the God of our fathers, support me to the entire fulfillment of the same. Can a Christian make such an oath? Yes or no? Obviously not. So masonry is nothing other than the ancient mystery religion and Jesuits are the ancient mystery religion and Islam is the ancient mystery religion behind the scenes and who do you think controls it all? Rome. Rome controls it all. So how would you like it if I said that I believe that Islam and Catholicism behind the scenes is one and the same thing? Have you noticed that Catholicism never complains about Islam not allowing evangelism? Because it suits their purpose, it's already Catholicism. But when evangelism is done in non-Islamic countries and it draws Catholics away, whoo, then you have huge drama. Isn't that interesting? Those are double standards which are hard to understand unless you look behind the scenes where you have all these Egyptian rooms and the Syrian rooms. And here is a Masonic Lodge, the Freemason Lodge meeting in Cairo, President Gamal Abal Nasser, President Nasser, 1954 to 17, Anwar Sadat, 1970 to 1981. They were all members of the AEO, the Ancient Egyptian Order, and of the ANOMS, the Order and the Arabic Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. So. Isn't it interesting that they're all working together behind the scenes? This is all a joke. Here is Judge Rahib Idris, ex-governor, Grand Master of the Sovereign Grand Commander of Egypt. There is the Fez as their symbol. This is uh, a mason himself who showed me in Lebanon that most of the high Muslims were all masons. He himself was a high mason. Anyway. Masonry. Let's go to this Masonic temple in Oklahoma. And what do we see? Aha! We see a fez. And we see Arabic 